Well, folks, I mentioned, of course, in my review for the Toyota Alpha that I wanted to release a tune setup of some kind for it on the channel. Kind of a special projects build, kind of not, kind of a circuit build, kind of not. It's sort of just a fully tuned version of it, up around 650 points, so you can adjust it to whatever level you plan to use it for. So maybe use it at 650, maybe use it at 600 with less power or more weight. So I'll leave all of that down to you. As far as the visual side, if you do want to go for the visual package that I've got, I will share a link to the player's design for this in the description right below the video, so you can click on that and add it to your library if you would like it to look like this one. As far as the parts though, of course we'll jump down into the tuning shop to show you what I've done. There is one thing in particular which you might want to do differently to what I've done, we'll get to that in a second. As far as the sports section, we've got the Stage 1 weight reduction. For the club sports, the board out engine, high lift cams, uh, I've got the power restrictor even though I'm not using it. Likewise with the ballast, it just allows you to tune it on the fly. Stage two weight, of course, as far as the semi-race, you want your crank, your computer. This is where you might want to change things though. I've gone for the high RPM turbo, because technically it does give you the best power and torque, but as you can see from the point level on the mid-range, it's actually fractionally higher. And even though you drop a little bit of power and a tiny, tiny bit of torque, I believe for most players, in most circumstances, you'll probably have better results with the mid-range, especially if you race it on technical circuits with a lot of corners. If you plan on using it on higher-end tracks, you know, Le Mans, Nürburgring, then you might want to go for a high-end. Like I said, I've gone for high-end and it is fantastic with it, but I would recommend at the very least buying both and seeing which one you prefer. You could even try it with the low-end as well, because the point level still say, uh, stays uh, pretty much the same. So you really do have that kind of uh, adjustability on this car. As far as the rest, we have the fully customized diff. We've got the stage three weight reduction route, of course. I have not bothered touching the rigidity. You could if you want to, I'll leave that down to you. As far as racing stuff, we've got the polished ports, balanced tuning, we've stroked out the engine as well as board, of course, the racing intercooler, filter, silencer, manifold pads, discs, doesn't really matter which one you go for, you could even go for the carbon ceramics if you so choose, you definitely want the torque vectoring centre diff, the clutch and flywheel, suspension, transmission, and I've opted for the racing tyres, hards as you can see in particular. For those wondering why not just go for softs, of course softs will make it even quicker and even better through corners, but in most real world racing circumstances, real world quote unquote in the game, softs just don't last long enough. They're basically qualifying tyres, so with hards at least you'll know if you do have to do some kind of longer event, you know that you can still get good performance on tyres that will, at the very least, last longer. And then for the extreme stuff, I have gone for the more drift-based stuff, so the steering angle and the hydraulic handbrake, just to improve general manoeuvrability. I haven't bothered with NOS, so of course you could if you want to. One of the things that the player has done on this vehicle as well, yeah, to increase the points, is to fit the rear diffuser. Of course, that makes a big difference on any car. I think it boosts this one up by like 15 points, something like that, 15, 20 or so. So if we jump into the settings, I wanted this one to feel like a, a racing minivan, of course, like in the style of a Renault Espace F1, a Ford Supervan, even something more obscure like the Sbarro uh, Citroen Picasso, the Picasso Cup, one of the earliest episodes of Unsung Heroes. We've got the racing hards, of course, fitted. The fully customized suspension is engaged. I've opted for the lowest possible ride height. I know some players don't like to do that because you will bottom out the suspension sometimes, so I'll leave it down to you if you want to have it a bit higher. That will depend on the track, of course, if you've got a lot of undulating roads. I've got the anti-roll fairly high on six, 33 for the compression on the dampers, 42 on the rebound, the frequency on 2.95 front and rear, three degrees of camber, the toe is 0.10 out on the front, 0.10 in on the rear, which of course aids stability. As far as the diff, of course differential settings will vary wildly on personal preference, and don't be surprised if in the future, after multiple updates, if this build drives differently, because they've made big changes to the game from update to update already, so maybe you will need to change things at some point. So I've got 10 on initial torque, then a slight difference between the front and the rear for both acceleration and braking, 20-30, and then 10-20, and I would recommend a 50-50 torque split. So you've got a good amount going to the front end still, 50% of course, and personally I find that that gives a lot of all-wheel drive cars or four-wheel drive cars a very, very nice handling profile. So 
give it a try. If you don't like it, of course, change it up, but give it a try. As far as the transmission, obviously you do have quite a few gears to work with, at least eight that you can adjust. And then as far as the auto setting though, I've gone for 270 kilometers an hour. So in practice, you're only using about six gears out of the eight. If you want to use more, drop that down to say 250, 240. I've opted for 270 because as I said, it's more of a six speed setup. So you don't waste as much time going up and down through all eight gears. As far as the ballast the ECU, I haven't touched any of that. The downforce is on the maximum because of course it's not a top end car anyway, regardless of what you do. In future, we'll have to see if they give us some kind of crazy engine swap. You know, you put in a Scudo engine or a, a GTR Nismo engine or a Supra engine into this, it's going to be a beast even more. Because with what this can do with a relatively modest amount of power, you know, 569 really isn't that crazy. And with downforce, of course, it's more focused on the cornering. So if you do ever get the chance to engine swap this, do everything else that I've done and then report back to me on how rapid that thing ends up being. Like I said, I have gone with a high range turbo, as you could see, and all the rest here is mostly just seeing what I fitted, which of course you could see just now. Anyway, so all that remains is to jump out to my usual test course of Dragon Trail to see what it can do in practice. Now, spoiler alert, this thing, as you'll see from just its posturing through corners and the stance, it is a weapon when you tune it correctly because around Dragon Trail, I ran, and as I've said before, I'm certainly not the fastest of drivers, no way near, and even I was taking this thing around the track, you know, in a properly quick fashion. <laughs> this was as quick as I took a Bugatti Chiron around this track, which is absolutely nuts. Now, of course, the Chiron was not as heavily tuned as this, at least if I recall correctly, but even to be in the same conversation as a Bugatti in a minivan, that is the kind of territory you would typically reserve for something like a Renault Espas F1. So that goes back to the point that I was making, that if this is what this vehicle can already do with 570 horses, I mean, that's only Lamborghini, you know, Superleggera or LP560 kind of territory. Imagine what it could do with 800 horsepower, or even a thousand, with the right engine swap. This could be an absolute monster. The tomahawk of minivans in the game, and even though it's no, uh, you know, replacement for the Espace, it is still a cool kind of vehicle in that sort of world when you tune it. So I hope you have a ton of fun with it. You certainly will if you give it a try. And if you do find it particularly good for a point level or a certain event, absolutely tell me about it down below. And of course, add any pointers or things that you've liked to put on it as a twist, a Frankenstein of the build down below in the comments. But of course, stick around on the channel for more tunes. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.